Hello, everyone. Uh, so today I'll be speaking about adding runtime power management capabilities to device drivers. Before going on to the topic, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm an associate software engineer at Colabra, and uh, I've been mostly working on some of the hardware enablement projects. So, um, one of the recent projects that we've been working on is for RK3588 upstreaming work. If you'd like to check it out, all of our work is online and just one search away. Uh, I've been pre previously also worked on uh, Steam Deck kernel development. Uh, and currently, I'm also part of the kernel CI uh, team where we've been doing some work on the regression tracking. Uh, in 2020, I was uh, um, an outreach intern for Sound Open Firmware Project. I started my Linux kernel development journey through IIO subsystem. So um, if anyone is new to I, uh, device driver development or Linux kernel in general, I would definitely recommend going through IIO subsystem. So today I'll be speaking about PM core and runtime PM relationship in general. Uh, and then we'll look at the subsystem level uh, runtime power management. Um, next, I'll uh, give a brief description about some of the helper uh, functions. And then we'll look at one of the light sensor driver and try to understand it, how it actually works, so that we can add RPM support to the light sensor driver. And finally, some issues and its solutions. So this is the uh, no, a big picture of how power management looks like in Linux kernel in today's date. Uh, uh, there's two models, static and dynamic. Runtime power management falls under the dynamic category, and especially for uh, idle devices. I won't be speaking about the other frameworks, uh, two reasons, because it's not relevant and because I don't know about them. Uh, but there's a very nice uh, talk from Kevin Hillman uh, about an overview of uh, all the frameworks. So I definitely recommend that if you'd like to understand all other frameworks and get an overview about it. Uh, so, runtime power management was first introduced in 2009 by Rafael Wysocki, and uh, back then we just had the traditional way of system suspend and resume where uh, all the devices would be put into low power state altogether or they would be brought up altogether. Uh, but this kind of model is not very efficient in all scenarios. For example, if you have just, if you would like only one device to be active, but all the other devices are also forced to be active in that case. So that is why a mechanism to put individual devices to sleep was needed. Uh, and that's how runtime power management was introduced. Um, one of the example could be if you'd like to listen to some music on your mobile phone or on your uh, laptop. Uh, at that time, you don't really need your screen to be active. Uh, it would just consume power without doing any work for you. So that's how you can add runtime power management support to that, and it will give some uh, performance benefit, and uh, it will consume less power. And this is just about one device, but if all the devices start adding runtime power management support, then it brings a, brings a huge difference in the overall uh, system power consumption. So runtime power management uh, is not completely independent. It integrates with PM Core uh, for some of its features. Uh, PM Core is where all the system-wide power transition happens, and uh, um, it handles all the system-wide related power management. And uh, runtime power management also need to uh, work with PM Core in order to synchronize uh, some of the functions with system-wide power management. Uh, PM Core also provides a work queue, so uh, or what run devices that have uh, runtime power management support will put their work items related to suspend or resume into this work queue, which is provided by PM uh, Core. Uh, so. Uh, next, you also have dev PM op structure, which usually has all the callback functions related to system-wide power transition. But the following three that you see are specific to runtime power management, and uh, this is where uh, devices will use these callback functions into their code and uh, perform suspend, resume, or uh, send an idle request. 
there are also certain uh, runtime power management fields. These fields are actually used by device drivers to update some of the information related to uh, uh, how power management is done and these fields are then used by PM core. PM core will, uh, uh, before, uh, before doing any suspend or resume request, it will first check for these fields to see whether it is satisfying all the criteria and then only it will uh, for, go ahead with the request. Uh, so finally, you also have certain helper functions provided by Runtime PM. These helper functions are again used by device drivers and uh, a device that once you have used these helper functions into device drivers, then helper functions will go to PM core and put their work items into the work queue and uh, PM core will then execute the callback functions provided in the device drivers. So it's not always necessary that the uh, uh, suspend or resume request always goes from the device uh, driver level. There are a bunch of layers on top of device drivers as well. Uh, for example, you can have a uh, domain where uh, there are a group of devices who fall under a certain domain. So uh, callback functions like suspend and resume can be called through these PM domain as well instead of on the uh, device driver level. And then you have some classes or types. Uh, example for classes would be like network class, uh, network devices fall into a network class. And uh, instead of uh, all the network devices doing runtime PM individually, it, it can happen at the uh, class level. Similarly, you have type, for example, network devices have different types like wireless devices, Ethernet devices. So these bunch uh, of devices can do PM together. And finally, you have bus level as well. One of the examples for the bus could be is if you have an I squared C bus having two or three devices. Uh, in that case, instead of two or three devices executing the callback functions, it could happen at the bus level so that you can uh, reduce the, uh, uh, there's no code duplicacy in that case. And if all the subsystem level is not present, then PM core will look for at the device driver level to check if uh, um, uh, there, there are callback functions and it will execute accordingly. This is the example of how uh, bus level uh, runtime PM looks like. Uh, if you see, there is a, um, a PM runtime suspend and resume functions. These are bus level suspend and resume functions. Uh, if you check the code for a PM runtime suspend, it internally calls PM generic runtime suspend. This is actually the suspend for, this will actually suspend the device associated with this particular bus. So if this bus is being used by two or three devices, then it can directly suspend at the bus level. So this is Lola. Lola uh, was initially single and happy and she can do anything. She can uh, sleep anytime, she can wake up anytime. Uh, that is how uh, devices as well work, having a, which have a, independent runtime support. So in that case, they don't depend on anyone. Next, Lola has a kid now after some years. So if the kid decides not to sleep at night, even Lola cannot sleep at night. So um, that's how uh, devices also have uh, dependency uh, with runtime PM. If the child device has runtime PM, then uh, uh, if there is a, a parent for that child device, then the parent cannot sleep as well. That is, it cannot go to suspend unless, uh, uh, until the child is active. So. Now Lola has two kids after one more year. So uh, again, even if one child decides not to sleep, then the parent cannot sleep. Uh, similarly, uh, that's how it works with runtime PM, where uh, if one of the device is also active, uh, parent cannot go to sleep. But runtime power management gives a way to avoid this by uh, if the child device executes this function, PM suspend ignore children into uh, their code, then 
the parent can go to suspend or can suspend and go to sleep um, only if this particular function is called by the child device. So uh, the very first step when you apply, uh, apl want to have support for your uh, uh, device into runtime power management, then first thing you do is initialization and enabling. Uh, by default, not uh, all the devices are suspended, but it's not necessary that your device is not able to do uh, input-output operation initially. It might be active, but still the runtime power management status by default will be suspended. Uh, so you need to tell PM Core to uh, uh, that the device is able to do input-output operation, so uh, it is active, So, but you have to inf inform PM Core, and that is done using PM runtime set active function. Uh, next, you also uh, need to enable runtime PM. This will basically allow you to use other helper functions for the runtime power management, uh, uh, so that um, Otherwise, you won't be able to use the helper functions provided by runtime uh, power management framework. It will give you an access denied kind of error code. And uh, there's also DevM version of this, and not uh, many devices use this uh, uh, function. There are still people using PM runtime enable, but DevM version usually helps to uh, also automatically disable the runtime PM, and you don't have to explicitly call the disable function when the device is being unregistered. Uh, now, this is interesting. Uh, if you want to run, the, uh, run your callback functions in an atomic context, uh, then you can do that using PM runtime IRQ save function. Uh, and that's how the interrupts will be disabled. So whenever any suspend function is being executed, they, it won't be blocked or uh, will not sleep if, uh, uh, if this function is called uh, and the interrupts will be disabled. But there is, uh, it is usually not uh, advisable to use this one, this function, because if the child device is executing this PM runtime IRQ safe and if it has a parent, uh, but if child is IRQ safe and the parent is non-IRQ safe, then that will create a problem. That is why what runtime power management does is that it will not let the parent sleep at all. It will, uh, it, it will never let the parent to uh, execute the runtime suspend function. It will not uh, be suspended. So that is why it is not advisable to use it unless you, you are fine with the parent not going to sleep. Uh, so uh, after the initialization and enabling, uh, next step would be uh, uh, resuming and suspending. Uh, resuming is usually done before you want to do any input-output operation. And that uh, the most simple function for that is PM runtime resume or PM request resume. And uh, after you're done with input-output operation, you have uh, PM runtime suspend and PM schedule suspend, which will just suspend the device. But usually devices are not very easy. Uh, you might have multiple users using this device. In that case, if you have a user A using the device and after it's done with its input-output operation, it will suspend it. But the user B is still trying to access the device. In that case, it will give a fatal error, and uh, that's why reference counting has been added to uh, runtime PM, where you have get and put function to keep a track of the device usage request. Uh, in this case, it, if you use a get function, it will do a resume, but it will also increment a usage count for it, and only when this usage count is zero, then only the device will go into a suspend mode. Uh, previously, many dri drivers use this PM runtime get function, but the problem with this function is that it will increment the usage counter, but if the resume fails, then it will uh, not decrement the usage counter back. So that is why a new helper function was introduced, PM runtime resume and get. Uh, so the, then all the drivers were made to replace with this uh, new function that was added. And uh, this will resume the device, but uh, if it fails, then it will again decrement the counter. 
there are also certain synchronous functions provided by runtime PM. Uh, so if you, if the helper function doesn't want to uh, block while the next code is executing, then the synchronous helper functions can be used as well. You have uh, PM runtime get sync and PM runtime put sync for that. Auto suspend. So uh, imagine you have a device which does input output operation every one or two seconds. In that case, adding runtime power management is not very helpful because it will uh, immediately go to sleep and immediately come back. And there's a lot of time and energy that is wasted in this process. So that is why there was a new feature added to this uh, auto suspend where uh, you mention a particular inactivity period for the device. And if the device is inactive for this very period of time, then only the suspend request is uh, uh, executed. So this is done using auto suspend functions. So auto suspend seems a bit uh, confusing. Uh, it doesn't mean it automatically suspends it. It just means that it will defer the suspend until the inactivity period has been elapsed. And to do that, you, uh, to add an inactivity period to your devices, you have this uh, delay time that uh, can be added using PM runtime set auto suspend delay. And uh, after that, now the PM core will use all the auto suspend function, but how does the PM core know when to start counting this inactivity period? Um, how does it know that when was the last input out output operation done? So you need to tell, the device drivers need to tell PM core that uh, I'm done with the input output operation. So uh, you can now start counting this inactivity period. Uh, so if suppose you have one second of inactivity period. So after one second only PM core will execute the suspend function. And that's how, uh, that is done using PM runtime mark last busy function. Uh, that will set the last busy field of power member. And you can also change this uh, inactivity period, period through SysFS. Uh, there's this SysFS attribute, auto suspend delay MS, that you can do. But there are certain race condition issues with this uh, auto suspend where suppose the inactivity period has started and a new input output request comes in. So at that time, uh, there are possible chances of race conditions, but the device drivers needs to handle this. They can, uh, they can check whether there are no pending input output request in their suspend function, and uh, then only execute a suspend. Finally, we will be uh, doing the removal where uh, after you're done with uh, your device is uh, being unregistered, you can also unregister the uh, RPM framework. At that time, you can just call PM runtime remove, which will also disable all the pending runtime uh, power management uh, uh, functions, and it will unregister device from the runtime PM framework. There are certain ways with which you can also control uh, these RPM option through SysFS. Uh, if you write, uh, on to this echo file, then PM runtime forbid is executed, which will uh, tell your device driver not to use uh, RPM. And similarly, if you write auto, then you can uh, again bring back the RPM support for the device. It will, uh, then you also, if you, some devices don't want to control through SysFS, so they would like to remove the attributes from SysFS. So that is done using PM runtime no callbacks. It will remove the uh, files from the power directory that you see here. So a little bit about light sensor driver because if you want to uh, apply RPM, we f first thing that you need to do is understand the driver, how it works. So this is an I squared C based light sensor driver. There are certain terminologies. Um, light sensor di drivers will fetch the intensity from environment and store it into a register. Uh, and similarly, we have ALS data register where uh, the raw value of the intensity is uh, stored. And then you have processed value as well. Processed value is basically um, 
uh, which has done some processing on the raw value because raw value has certain factors like window factor and uh, you don't want to count infrared light, you just want uh, visible light. In that case, there is some processing done on the raw value and the, that new value is called the processed value. This driver also supports uh, multiple integration time. Uh, Integration time is basically uh, time taken to capture one intensity uh, data for one intensity of light and more the time, the better the data is in that case. So this is the in, uh, where we have all the, the previous information that I said about the light sensor driver is stored using this info uh, variable and Info has read raw, write raw, and read available. Read raw is basically when you read from the sensor, and write raw is basically when you write back to the sensor. And this is where actually our input output operation is being done. If you see the details of read raw, um, we are reading the ALS data register, and that is our raw value. And if you see the processed one, uh, where we are again, uh, uh, getlux is basically where we are doing again reading through the sensor, but it is a processed data. And get integration time is what the current integration time is. As I said, there are various integration times supported by the uh, device. So uh, this will uh, display the current integration time. And if you want to write back to the sensor uh, register, then you do this using set integration time, uh, which is done using write raw. Then you also have channels. Um, if you would like to access all these details through channels, uh, which we mentioned, that the, which we captured from the sensor, then you need to define these channels. And uh, again, you have raw processed, and whatever details you need, you can add to these channels. It will look something like this. And then um, these are the files that you get, SysFS files, after you add the channels. Now we will actually add the RPM support to this uh, driver. The very first thing that I mentioned was to t uh, inform the PM core that the device is active. And you do that using PM runtime set active. And uh, next thing is if you want to be able to use the other helper functions, then you need to enable RPM framework. That is done using Dev uh, DevM PM runtime enable. Uh, next, I want to use uh, auto suspend for this driver. So I inform RPM uh, PM core that uh, use PM runtime auto suspend. I also set a one second of delay. This is the inactivity period of time only if my sensor or the, my device driver uh, device remains inactive for one second, then only execute the suspend function. That is what I'm informing to the PM core through this. So. As we saw that we were doing the input output operation through the read data function and uh, so before doing the input output operation you would want to resume the device and that is done using the set power state. I will get into details about that function later but assume that it is doing the resume function uh, and after doing the input output operation, I will want to suspend the device. And that is done using again set power, but the second argument is false in that. And similar thing is done in get lux function as well. If you see him again uh, before reading the data, I will first resume the device and then I will suspend the device. So this is the, uh, how the set power state function looks like. If the first value is true, then it will do a PM runtime resume and get. That is, it will increment the usage counter for my device and, uh, uh, and it will execute the resume function, callback function. And if the second argument is false, I need to now inform the PM core that this is the time to start counting the inactivity period the one second that we had set. So that is done using PM runtime mark last busy since I'm done doing the input output operation and uh, uh, it will mark the last busy time. And finally, once that time has elapsed, uh, put auto suspend is executed where um, 
where it will suspend the device only after an activity period has been ex uh, elapsed. This is how it is actually hooked to the PM core where we have runtime suspend and runtime resume callback function. This is very device specific on how you do it for your device. In this case, we just write some value to the register. Um, uh, suspend will basically dis disable the device and resume will enable the device by writing some values to the register. Once you have added all these support, uh, there will be a power directory created uh, under this uh, for your device and it will have all these values, auto suspend, delay, control, I think we discussed most of them, but there are two of them which we would like to discuss, which is actually used by um, PowerTop. If you see the runtime active time and runtime suspended time, that is used by PowerTop to uh, give you the usage details in the device stat for per each particular devices. So this can be useful if you have multiple device uh, who has added runtime PM. So the issues that you might face is, what I faced after doing this was, once the device goes into suspend mode and then comes back to uh, resumes, then all the register data that was previously stored is lost, uh, so it will uh, be it will come back to its initial value, whatever was stored in the, for example, I, I had the initial value for integration time as 100 ms, um, and I changed it to 400 ms for getting some values, but after suspend, it will come back to 100 ms. So you need to uh, restore the values of your register using, uh, for this case, we used a rich cache, and that could be used to restore your values for the registers. And usually devices are not independent. You need to have, uh, there are a bunch of devices that work together and we, and now there's also power domains. So there is, uh, runtime PM is not always useful. So that is why a new uh, framework was added that is called as GenPD. And this is basically built on top of uh, runtime PM, which will, uh, manage the power for group of devices. There is a governor who will manage all the devices under the same PM, which are under the same PM domain, and it will suspend the devices when all of the devices go into idle mode. Thank you, that's it. Uh, special thanks to some of my colleagues who are not here, who helped me prepare with this presentation, so thanks to them as well. Any question times? <laughs> Any questions? Hi, thank you for the presentation. I have a question. So I know if I uh, saw correctly. So uh, for the driver, for the sensor driver, you did uh, uh, also uh, auto uh, suspend. But also when reading data, the sensor data, you are doing a, a, a resume and then suspend. So isn't auto suspend enough? So no. you're reading the data and then you just auto suspend after oh. 1,000 milliseconds or? Uh, no, that is not enough. You need to explicitly mention uh, that uh, uh, you need to explicitly mention uh, whether you would like to suspend the device. As I said in the beginning as well, that auto suspend is just used to add the inactivity period, but you need to still explicitly use the uh, auto suspend functions given by uh, RPM framework to suspend it. So it doesn't handle it automatically. Uh, okay, and is it, uh, uh, I know, to do a, each time uh, suspend and resume, uh, each time you're uh, reading a value, it, I, for me it doesn't seem, uh, uh, it, it seems a, a lot of waste of time, I <laughs> you know, to say, to resume and suspend, resume and suspend each time. Uh, so it's, uh, it actually sh uh, makes a difference if you, uh, this one is 
there are certain devices which which have more idle time in this case it's only one second so it doesn't uh, seem very useful but in certain cases there there could be a uh, more idle time as well you you don't actually do uh, resume and suspend every time if you read one per second the device won't get the chance to enter suspend so you'll be always active if the 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 number of times you're reading is uh, much more than the suspend delay. So that happens only if you, uh, if you finish your readings, right? So the, the device won't actually get into a suspend if you continuously read from it. Yes, if I continuously read on it, then it won't be suspended and that's what inactivity period is for. Exactly. Uh, and uh, only if it is, uh, inactive for that very period of time, then it is possible that it will remain inactive. And that is why you, uh, uh, after it is, inactivity period has elapsed, it will execute the suspend function. I have another question if you know. So you add runtime PM suspend, but some drivers also have system PM suspend. Do you know how these two interact? Uh, that's a complete whole topic. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. but, mm, I know that there is this. This has this is being handled by PM Core uh, on how this runtime suspend and system suspend work together. So yeah, the, it's it's handled at the PM Core level, but I don't know the internal details about okay, it. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Thank you.